In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, a thrilling voice calls out, and chides the darkened shades of earth. Fell dreams are gone, dim shadows fly. Christ in his might now shines on high. The Lamb of God is sent below, himself to pay the debt we owe. Oh, for this gift let every voice with songs and prayers to God rejoice. The blessed author of our race took human form to bring us grace, lest law should be those whom he made, and he with love our sin repaid. And see with heavenly grace instill, a mother's loving heart is filled. Behold, a virgin's body bears the mystery of endless years. The mother makes her spotless breast a temple for the child to rest. This virgin loved the Holy One and she conceived the eternal Son. To him who comes the world to free, to God the Son all glory be, to Father, maker of us all, and Holy Spirit, God we call. Drop down dew from above you heavens, and let the clouds rain the just one. Let the earth be opened, and bud forth the Savior. Our Lord and King is drawing near. Oh, come, let us adore him. Our Lord and King is drawing near. Oh, come, let us adore him. Rejoice, daughter of Sion, and exalt, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord comes, and there will be a great light in that day, and the mountain shall drop down sweetness. The hills shall flow with milk and honey, for in that day the great prophet will come, and he will renew Jerusalem. Our Lord and King is drawing near. Oh, come, let us adore him. Behold, the God men of the house of David will come to sit upon the royal throne, and you will see him and your heart will rejoice. Our Lord and King is drawing near. Oh, come, let us adore him. The Lord, our protector, will come, the Holy One of Israel, wearing a crown upon his royal brow. And he will reign from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Our Lord and King is drawing near. Oh, come, let us adore him. The Lord will appear, and he will not deceive. If he should delay, wait for him to come. He will surely come and will not tarry. Our Lord and King is drawing near. Oh, come, let us adore him. The Lord will come down. 
like rain upon the fleece of Gideon. Justice will reign, and an abundance of true peace. All the kings of the lands will adore him, and every nation will serve him. Our Lord and King is drawing near. O come, let us adore him. A child will be born to us, and he will be called God the Almighty. He will sit upon the royal throne of David his father, and he will hold sway the sign of his power on his shoulder. Our Lord and King is drawing near. O come, let us adore him. Bethlehem, city of the Most High God, from you will come forth the King of Israel, and he will proceed forth from his eternity, and he will be greatly praised in the midst of the entire universe. And there will be peace in our land when he will have come. Our Lord and King is drawing near. Oh, come, let us adore him. Let us pray. <clears throat> Christ, the Lamb, who existed before time in time and exists for all time, will come to us again. He is the true Lamb, of, who is the true King of justice, and his reign will have no end. Amen. Amen. Drop down dew from above you heavens, and let the clouds reign the just one. Let the earth be opened, and bud forth the Savior. I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Lo, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible, of the terrible day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents. So I will not come and strike the land with a curse. Malachi prophesies the birth and mission of John the Baptist. Like a new Elijah, John will go before the Messiah and prepare the people for the Lord's coming. A spirit of joy and wonderment pervades today's prophecy, for the hand of God is active in Israel. The people wonder what it will all mean for their future. What does it mean for us today? The seventh O Antiphon climaxes the series. The Messiah is addressed in human form. He is asked to remain with us as Emmanuel. May our hearts be ready to receive the Lord 
into our small personal world as he once came to the little town of Bethlehem. Emmanuel, God with us. God, stay with us. It seems that this day is one of those days that was unexpected. We have our blizzard conditions, we have our wind, we have our complications. Even the inability to broadcast this live. But Regardless of what happens around us, regardless of the weather, the technical complications, it doesn't change the fact that we're still getting closer and closer to Christmas. And even though this Christmas may have some complications compared to years before, it doesn't change the action of God in our lives. And while it is easy for us to allow these complications, these distractions to in a sense, interfere with our celebrations, we have to remember that it doesn't matter what happens around us. What matters is that we have prepared room for Christ in our hearts, that we've prepared room for Christ among us, so that at Christmas we can truly celebrate the beauty and the joy and the goodness that is Christ among us, our Emmanuel, which means God is with us. We have to remember that we were constantly going to be distracted. We are constantly going to be pointed in different directions by society, by family, by friends, with all of the different preparations, with all of our anxieties and worries, our own insecurities. We are constantly going to be bombarded day in and day out, day after day, with all kinds of things that will take our attention and our eyes off of God. But we are called to remember what is truly important, which is the presence of God among us. Our church is open all the time for people to pray. We offer different services, we offer different devotions to help us to stay focused on what's truly important. And while it's true that we have our own worries and our own lives to live, we should remember always to take a little time, even a moment, to dedicate it to God. And while it's easy for us to be caught up in what we're doing and what we have to do, the moment that we really begin to focus more on that than we do on the presence of Christ among us, that's when we truly start to walk off the path that God has destined for us. So let us stay focused on what is truly important and not allow these distractions to keep us from celebrating the memorial of the birth of Jesus as we prepare for his second coming. Let us be constantly present to God, who is always present to us. And let us remember that as we begin to, in a sense, wrap up or conclude our novena, that we are truly making space for Christ. The final preparations are being made. The final things are coming to a head. The weather is not cooperating. And yet, here we are, preparing our hearts for God. The Advent season is coming to a close. And as it does, let us remember this. God is with us, but that doesn't mean that we are always with him. St. Paul tells us that we are called to praise unceasingly. We see this in scripture all over the place. How can we pray unceasingly when we don't even recognize God among us? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we have heard John the Baptist preparing the way of the Lord, let us prepare a way in our hearts for the Lord. That it with the coming of Christmas in just a day or so, it's already the 23rd. With the coming of Christ in a day or so, 
let us remember very carefully the words of Scripture to prepare a place for the Lord, to make straight our paths before Him, to fix our attention on Him and allow Him to work in our hearts. On this day, as we make our final preparations for the coming of the Lord, let us not lose our focus or attention on what truly matters, Christ among us. Please stand. O Emmanuel, our King and Legislator, expected of all nations and their only salvation, O come be our Redeemer, Lord our God and Master. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his heart. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their throne and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Emmanuel, our King and Legislator, expected of all nations and their only salvation. O come, be our Redeemer, Lord, our God and Master. Let us pray. Father, you spoke and your word became man, born of the Virgin Mary. Christ humbled himself to share our human nature. We humble ourselves before the child and ask for faith and love. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, O Israel, to thee shall come Emmanuel.